Hi everybody. Well, I finally made it, and thank you for watching. Tonight we're going to make a sun catcher polymer clay butterfly. And part of it was inspired by Sigrid Soto. She done the little dangles hanging from it out of recycled CDs. And she made hers into feathers. Well, I decided I wanted little teardrop shapes to hang from the bottom of my butterfly. So, let's have at it and excuse my hand for moving the camera. So, first thing we have to do is you have to roll out a piece of polymer clay. And I already did it because nobody wants to sit around and watch somebody roll polymer clay. Then all I did was I took a nice stencil that I found. You can find them anywhere or you can even cut one out of a piece of paper. It doesn't matter. Then all you got to do is make sure you've got it pressed down fairly well. So that way if it does slide you still got a little bit of an imprint and it'll show you where it was. Then all you do is gently cut around with your X-Acto blade and you just cut all the way around your butterfly. It's pretty simple. Everybody can do it. Once you get it cut out and you take your stencil off, I have went and I found these grommets and I wish I had found the smaller ones first, but I didn't. I only had the larger ones and I really like the smaller ones and you can see they really are quite a bit smaller. Oops. And I found the small ones, I believe it was in Joann's, in the notions department. So after you get it all cut out and you bake it, it takes probably half hour, 45 minutes. I'm not going to make you wait on that. Instead, I've went ahead and I've done one. And like I said, my grommets are much larger than I would have liked. Then I'm going to take four paints. And these just happen to be three of my dad's favorite colors. There's fuchsia. It's actually uh, Anita's, and it's royal fuchsia. There's another Anita's dark red. Another Anita's orange. And then I have a folk art outdoor metallic pure gold. So those are the ones we're going to use. And just squirt out a little bit. Doesn't take much. Make sure you have a wet sponge. And just dabble it in and start sponging all over. Don't matter where you go with it. It's all going to look good no matter what. Once you get one collar on, you know, just add another collar. I don't wash out my sponge, I just kind of turn it. And yes, I get very quiet when I'm crafting, so, sorry. And my head popped off. I'm not going to edit this, this is just things that happen. And you have to get over it. And the last color is orange. And those colors look pretty good together. Better than I thought they would, to be honest. So, I'm going to rinse my sponge out before I do add the gold because it might really muck it up. And I don't want to muddy it. But once you wring it out pretty good, you don't have to worry too much. Keep a towel, something around so you can keep your hands pretty clean. And then just sponge. You don't have to worry about putting too much of any color. Whatever you like is what's best. 
Nobody can tell you it's right or wrong because it's your piece of art. It's your creation. You do what you like. Then once that's done, and I'm pretty happy with that, I'm going to set it aside to dry. And I'm going to clean up my paint mess. And I hope y'all will bear with me. This is my first video. So I'm sure as time goes, I'll get a little bit better. Well, maybe not a little bit better, hopefully a lot better. But we all have to start somewhere. So, got that all cleaned up, dried off. Now, the little butterfly head that popped off. Sad, isn't it? I think I'm just going to paint it gold. He's got gold antenna. He might as well have a gold head. It's not going to hurt anything. And a little bit of the sponge painting is showing through the gold, and that's fine with me. The next part of the sun catcher comes from Secret Soto. And I'm sure I'm not pronouncing her name right. But she took CDs and she actually went ahead and drew on them. It's easier for me with my hands to cut them in half. Then, if you're careful, somewhere in here, they do pop apart. There. So, I'm going to use the two parts that do not have the silver reflective on them. And I'm just going to take... It's a cutter, um, I believe it's a Sculpey cutter for polymer clay, but it'll make the shape I need. So just draw around with your Sharpie. And I think I'll probably try and get three on each side. I won't need that many, but that way if any of them break when I'm cutting them out, I've got extra. And if you happen to hear anything scream in the background, there's no murders going on. We have three female blue and gold macaws, and when they want to be loud and boisterous, they are, and there's really nothing you can do about it. Some days are just louder than others in our household, but we can't imagine life without them. We have Gabby, she's the youngest. And she belongs to my mom. She's wonderful. She is three years old. And she likes to lay in my mom's lap, roll over, and get her belly rubbed. Then we have Dolly. She's the newest to our little brood. She belongs to a friend of my mom's whose husband is having medical issues right now. So we're taking care of her. And then we have my old lady, which is over 30 years old, and her name is Berta. So, but as you can see, these cut really simple. I was surprised as to how easy they are to cut out. And I kind of like to start on the outer edge of the oval part and go up to where the point is and then go the opposite direction so I'm not having too many issues. If I don't line up the bottom 
as you can see exactly down here, it's not that noticeable. So that's one down, and I don't know how many more to go before maybe none of them will break. So I've had them break on me. And I'm sure everyone else has too who's done these. A little bit of an edge there. A friend of ours came over the other night and I was working on them. And he thought they were guitar picks. I don't know if you could use them or picks. I don't think they'd be strong enough. I think they would probably break. If I'm able to get four out, that's all I'll need for this. That's all I'm going to do for now. And I'm probably not staying in frame very much. And that's something that will go with learning, I'm sure. Like I said, be patient. It's my first one. I'm really trying. This is something I've really thought about doing for quite a while. Well, there we go. That way, I've got an extra. Nope, no extra. We have extra if we need them. Then all I did is I took alcohol inks. And I have Wild Plum, Poppy Field, Sunset Orange, and Gold. And the gold you really have to shake to make sure that you've got all the sediment and stuff. So... Then just line them up, whichever way you want. There's no right or wrong. And start with whatever color you would like. I'm going to put some orange down first. And I don't worry about where it goes or anything like that. Let's try the red, the poppy field. It's so pretty. and the wild plum. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm just going to kind of dab off all that excess before we add the gold. And you kind of get a neat pattern a little bit from your paper towel. The gold kind of spreads out the other colors. So let it set for a minute. That'll give me a chance to clean up a little bit of this mess. I'm not real good with the alcohol inks. I'm just kind of learning how to deal with them.
Now let's get those to a little bit. Find my heat gun. And it's stuck on my hook under here. There it is. Got it undone. Oops, well, that one didn't want to stay up on the table. All right, they're pretty much dry. You can actually see through them pretty well. You can tell. You can't, the camera's too low. But they do look quite nice. I again, I'm so sorry. I'm not very good at this. The butterfly is pretty well dry now. And I like him. And now we need to take the Dremel. And through where you want dangles for him to hang, just drill your holes. And I think I want one in, and then I want one to hang in this area. And I'll do it again on the other side. And then your little dangles, you're going to need to drill a hole in wherever you want them, whichever direction you want them to hang from. And I'll probably have to make these a little bit bigger. For the jump rings to fit through. get a little bit bigger of a drill bit. And that's okay. I've already got them. Just don't want to go too big. So let's try this one. This is the one I use when I drill for tiny jewelry. All right. Let's do it again. I know you can't see very well from the angle. Mm 
and I'm going to go back through the butterfly to make sure that it's big enough. all tidied up again. Then you have to decide what wire would you want to hang your butterfly from. And I'm thinking to go with the gold, since we have gold grommets. And don't worry about the little bit of paint that's on them. It will wipe right off. flesh cutters. So, kind of want a nice little piece of wire. And let's see if we can get some of this paint off of the grommet. It will wipe off. It's not a big deal. And if you don't like butterflies, you don't have to do butterflies. You can do this with pretty much anything you like. I just happen to like butterflies, and it's what I have. So, take your jump rings. And dump a couple out. And I'm hoping... Get, you know, you always... This is something I had to learn. You never pull them apart. You twist them. And they come open just like that. So I'm going to try and get all my jump rings on first. And you may not have a good view for this. There's one. I think it'll take three jump rings for each dangle that you do. Kind of gives them a little bit of a little flowy when they blow around a little bit. So, I don't know about where y'all are from tonight, but I'm just outside of Augusta, Georgia, and it's so humid and hot here. I don't know what size the jump rings are. They were just in a random pack that I had.
And I know I have two pair of pliers out, but sometimes my hands just don't work well like that. And this is going to be one of those times because that jump ring is not working out for me. Let me see if I can grab a hold of it. I have more trouble with my left hand than I do my right. This one needs tightened up just a little bit. All right, got those on. Now take the other big ones and run them through your dangle and then through your other jump ring. I'm hoping I'm staying in frame enough. Well, that little jump ring came off. I must not have had it tightened enough. Well, I'll try them again. It happens. And then you have your dangles on your little wind catcher. So all you got to do then is run your wire through, fold it up, get back through the other, fold it up. And there you have it. My lighting's not very good. I apologize if I went out of frame very often. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe. I promise I will get better. So, 
this is my first one. I appreciate y'all watching. And that's it. Thank you.